Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This week I would like to do a little something different than what I've done in the past. I am going to share my process for creating a sketch on canvas of this photograph. I am fairly new in my oil painting journey, but I have been very flattered by the comments and the messages requesting a full tutorial. So I thought that this recording would be a fun way to try out a kind of vlog talking through my process and giving you some of the tips that I have learned as I've started to develop my own approach to oil painting. For anyone who'd like to follow along, I am using this image from Pixabay. You can see the artist here um, in case you'd like to download it for yourself. When starting a new painting, the first thing I do is tone the canvas. I have toned this canvas with a burnt sienna, a Gamblin burnt sienna, and it is diluted with ga Gamasol. And what I like to do is really kind of dilute that paint. I use a bigger one inch brush and I cover the entire canvas and then I wipe it down with the shop towel. Once I have done that and allowed the painting to dry or allowed that toning to dry, I will come back with just a regular old number two pencil and start to sketch my image from the photograph onto the canvas. Now, uh, one of the things that I've learned as a self-taught painter, I've mostly um, learned from different YouTube videos, different free tutorials, different um, YouTube teachers, is that it's really important to get that image down so that you can start painting. So I 100% do not believe in gatekeeping and whatever way works best for you to get that image on the canvas works best for me. Some um, people like to sketch directly onto the canvas as I do. Some people like to use a gridding system where they will grid out the photograph, grid out the canvas, and kind of try to use that as a map for creating an accurate picture. I have seen artists who use a medium like charcoal or graphite, rub it all over the back of a printed picture, and then trace it onto the canvas, or even use a projector. And all of these are valid ways to get that image onto the canvas so that you can start painting. So if you um, your drawing skills aren't 100% where you'd like them to be, don't let that stop you. Um, go ahead and just try a painting um, and see how, see how you like it. There are some landscape artists who do an excellent job of just kind of uh, making quick shapes on where mountains or where trees or where cabins can be and then they can create a whole landscape. But for myself, I find that having a detailed sketch is really helpful. And you'll also notice that um, different artists will have different levels of details in their sketch. I am someone who thinks through the process of the painting as I am making the sketch. So I find that it's really helpful to spend a lot of time and add those details and start to think about how I'm going to approach the different elements of the photo. One of the things that I have learned in the past uh, few years as I have been painting is to think about what my eye sees in terms of shapes rather than trying to uh, draw a car on the page. And what I mean by that is I'll think about, okay, well, these wheel wells are circles, but they're also a little bit wonky. So looking back and forth, thinking about the lines of the tire, the lines of the door, how lines intersect, and where the lines are placed within the segment of the photograph that you're focusing on can be really helpful. And this is a reason why I like to do the sketch. You'll see that next week when I post the second part of this series where I approach the underpainting, that tire that I just drew in has given me a lot of trouble. It was really wonky in the photograph. It's turned at a strange angle. So I had a lot of trouble deciding, okay, where is this tire in relation to the bumper and in relation to that front fender in relation to the line of the car. Um, and so that's why I like to start to work out 
these lines and work out these shapes with the under with the sketching i also start to think about how i would like to blend my colors and what colors i'd like to use or mix for the final painting as i'm going through these different elements i just start to take mental notes on the different um, colors I might use and how I can blend those colors into different hues and shades. So this has been um, very helpful to me to take the time to do a detailed sketch and if you have never done one before I think that you will really enjoy the process as well. It's a bit like for those of you who do any creative writing it's a bit like taking notes or doing pre-writing or writing an outline for yourself um, in the writing process. So here I'm just continuing to trace out these lines and think through the photo. I'm thinking about how the lines work together to make the photo or the painting of this photo, I should say, the most visually appealing. Um, if something doesn't work, I just take a little bit of gamma sol as I've done here and I erase it <laughs> and, and go back over it. Once I have the basic shape of the car in, I start to think about the elements on the car itself, the particular photo that I'm working from. The car has a lot of rust. It has areas of the car where it is in the sun, areas where it is in shadow. There is moss um, and other plants and things um, growing on the car. So I start to think through where I will indicate this in the final photo. Um, my son actually came in and asked me <laughs> why I hadn't put the letters on the license plate yet. So that's why I drew those in, but I think I'm probably going to cover those up with some vines or some foliage. Um, letters and numbers are still very challenging to me <clears throat> at this point in the process, but we always are improving and we're always learning. And so um, it'll be a fun challenge for the future. So here you can see I am adding in some of the shading for the hood, thinking about where that rust and that grime and that dirt are going to go, and also thinking about where I need areas of darkness and areas of lightness to start to give the car form, to start to make the shapes look round. And I will talk more about this and how I kind of think through this process when I do the underpainting stage next week. But what's most important now is kind of squinting my eyes at the photo and trying to to translate those areas of shade into the sketch itself. The car windows have a bit of reflection in them, but they are also peeking into um, the inside of the car, some shadows of the inside of the car. So I'm thinking about where you can see that interior and also thinking about areas of shadow as they would fall under the car. I am adding in some notes to myself here with some squiggly foliage and where I will be placing in the vines and the different twigs and the sticks. Right now, I just need to mentally remind myself that that will be a very dense area of painting. So I do that with the squiggly lines here. And I'm already starting to think through the different kinds of greens that I will mix um, if I want to saturate these greens with specific colors and how I can make the colors of the painting come together. The trees and the canopy in this painting are also a very important part of the overall composition. The trees come in and they provide some very nice vertical lines that draw the eye into the image of the car. Now the photograph itself is excellent. The artist has already done a lot of that work for us as painters. So I'm trying to just simplify those elements, pick out what I think is most important and translate it onto the canvas. But the vertical lines of the trees drawing us into the car, which will then take us in to that horizontal line is very important. I'm also thinking about the focal point. The focal point is usually 
not in the center, but slightly off center. And I see that as being the grill in the front and the headlight, which will then run the eyes back over the car. So as I am thinking through my colors and thinking about how I will approach this, I know that I want to make that the brightest spot in the painting to bring the eye into the painting itself. <clears throat> What's also important is to think about those patches of canopy. Um, what is so lovely in that original drawing or that original photograph are those patches of bright blue light, the bright green where the sun is coming through the canopy of leaves and shining down onto the car in contrast with those darker areas and those darker shades. So I want to make a note of myself for where those darker areas might be. Of course, we'll have shadow under the car and then we'll have shadows towards the edges as well to draw the reader's eye back into that focal point. And the more detail I can add at this point, the more time I spend thinking through, the easier it's going to be when I get to that next stage. Just adding in those final details here, thinking through the windshield, which I have mentioned, and then one another uh, great element from that photograph are these layers of leaves and debris that are falling on the car. And what I love so much about this in the, in the image is that the leaves are orange and red and brown while the car is kind of this bright blue and white, and then the leaves around it are full summer full late spring for full early summer. So there's quite a contrast of this dead debris of the car and then the beautiful light behind it. So here's my final sketch, the original image. And I think I got pretty close guys. What do you think? Um, thank you so much for watching. Please come back next week for section two of this painting. And I look forward to seeing you soon.